As an interesting application of the notion of edge colorings, let us go back to the four color theorem and see how we can express it in terms of edge coloring in quite a surprising way, uh, perhaps. So remember the fourth, the four color theorem uh, says that any map, the four color theorem with respect to faces says that any map can have its faces colored uh, in four colors, so that no two faces that share an edge have the same color. And we showed that this was equivalent to the four color theorem for vertices and uh, of a planar graph. And we also showed that to prove it for any map, it's enough to consider cubic maps. So cubic means that the degree of each vertex is equal to three. And perhaps surprisingly, the four color theorem is equivalent to the statement that the chromatic index of any cubic map is equal to three. And remember, Witzing tells us that the chromatic index is either three or four. So uh, perhaps it's surprising that if we can prove that it's always equal to three, then uh, we have proven the four color theorem. Now, of course, we will not prove this theorem because if it's equivalent to the four color theorem, it, its proof would be just as hard somehow. Uh, rather, we know this theorem is uh, helpful because since the four color theorem has been proved, we know now that every cubic map is three edge colorable. But what uh, I will uh, now show you the proof of is this theorem, which states the equivalence of the two theorems. And this is indeed helpful because uh, if you know that some theorem you're struggling with is equivalent to a theorem whose proof is known, then you know that your theorem is true. So uh, let's go on and prove it. So we need to prove two directions. We need to prove that a cubic map G is four colorable F if and only if it is three colorable E. So let's first assume that we are dealing with a map and it is four colorable F, and we need to show that it is three colorable E. Now, so far we've uh, called the colors blue, yellow, red, and whatnot, and as I hope that you have realized, the name of the color is just an abstract thing. We can call the colors C1, C2, C3, and so on. The only reason we use actual names of colors is because it appeals to our intuition. And in this theorem, in the proof of this theorem, we will call colors in a smart way that will help us prove the theorem. So we will colors uh, we will call the colors not blue, yellow, and so on, but we will call the colors 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, as if maybe an alien civilization would call colors. And uh, so assume that you have colored the faces in these colors. And now here comes a way to color the edges. You give each edge the color that is the sum, modulo 2, of the two face colors. So let's look at an example. Let's look at the following cubic map. So uh, I'm say we have this color is 0, 1, and this color is 1, 1. And then I want to color this edge in the middle. So I wonder what color should I give this red edge? And the recipe tells me, give it the sum of these colors. So I take 0, 1 plus 1, 1. For those of you who know, I'm treating this as a vector space over Z2, but forget I said that if that is not something that helps. So I add the coordinates, 0 plus 1 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, uh, but 2 modulo 2 is equal to 0. So this is the same as 1, 0, mod 2. So I end up giving this edge the color 1, 0. And I keep doing that because each edge is going to lie between exactly two faces, so I take the face colors, I add the modulo 2, and this will give me the edge color. So is this really helpful? I mean, if I'm coloring the edges in the same colors, then I will show that the edges are 
four colorable, right? Because I'm gonna get all these four. Well, no. You can check by writing the addition uh, table for these four colors that in fact you can only get zero zero as, as a sum of a color with itself. So zero zero could only be the color of an inch if both faces on each side had the same color, which they're not allowed because by definition of face colorability that's not allowed. So this color will not arise as an edge color and all edges will in fact be colored using 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And uh, this shows that if I start with a four-face colorable cubic map, I can show that it's three edge colorable. Now let's prove the other direction, which is a bit more intricate. So uh, assume now that the edges are colorable in three colors and we need to show that the faces are four colorable. So now let's call the three edge colors red, blue, and black. And uh, at each vertex, because the vertex degree is three, all the colors will meet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the red edges. So that makes each degree equal to two. So uh, if I have a vertex and I have one black, one red, and one blue edge. And this is the same for all vertices. By deleting the red vertices everywhere, I will get a graph with each vertex degree equals to two. But this means that I have a graph where each vertex degree is even. So the graph's components will be Eulerian. So the resulting graph will be a union of Eulerian graphs. And we have proved already in a previous theorem that uh, Eulerian graphs are two-face colorable. So after removing the red edges, the remaining graph will, of course, have some of the faces will be, to, so to speak, twice as big because I've uh, removed uh, the red edges. So uh, it will be a two-face colorable graph. And I call these face colors 0 and 1. I will show you an illustration in a minute how this goes about. But there is nothing special with the red edges. I can just as well do the same with blue edges. If I delete the blue edges, I will get degree 2 everywhere. So it's a union of Eulerian graphs. So again, this is the faces of this now different graph uh, can be colored in two colors, which I also call 0 and 1. And now I put back uh, the edges. So when I deleted the blue edges, I had put back the red edges. Now I put back the blue edges, and in the original graph, uh, I combine the color coming from the red edge removal and the color coming from the blue edge removal into these four possible colors of faces. And one can show that this gives a face coloring in the sense that different faces that have an edge in common will have different colors. So let me show you how this works in an illustrative example. So assume we have this cubic map and I have already colored all the edges blue, uh, red or black. Now I remove the red edges. So what I get is a graph with just the black and blue edges. And this graph will have two faces. It will have the infinite face and it will have this face. And it's uh, in this case, I can color this graph, the face of this graph in two different colors. So I color this face with the color zero and this face with the color one. So this is the infinite face that I'm coloring with the color one. Then I do the same thing but instead of removing the red edges, I remove the blue edges. So now I still have my black edges, but now my red edges are back and I have removed the blue edges. And uh, now I again color these two faces 
somehow maybe I color this one zero and this one one. So here we go. And now I want to color my uh, original graph. So let me draw dotted lines where I have removed edges. So how do I color the faces of the original graph? Well, they will be there. The colors that I'm going to use are these 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, where the first coordinate comes from this part and the second coordinate comes from this part. So let's look at this face. This face is in the zero region of the red removal graph. So it will have zero as first component. And it's in the zero region of the blue removed graph. So it will have zero in the second component, the second coordinate. Now I look at this. This face is in the one region of this graph, but still in the zero region of that graph. This face is in the zero region of this graph, but in the one region of that graph. And the infinite face is in the one region of this graph and in the one region of this graph. So by combining the colors, I get a color for each face and different faces that attach at the same edge will have different colors. Why is that? Well, because they will be separated from each other, either in the uh, red removed graph or in the blue removed graph. So these two faces, for example, since they have a blue edge between them, the blue edge will still be there when I have only removed the red edge. So therefore they will be on different color sides with respect to that. Uh, Whereas, say, these two faces, the edge between them is there all the time, so they will be separated from each other in both the red removed and the blue removed graph. So since um, I always have these edges of different color everywhere, uh, I will get a face coloring. So this was a bit uh, intricate, but it shows that with this uh, quite ingenious trick, I am able to color the faces in four colors, given that my edges have been colored in three colors. And since we've proven the other direction, this uh, completes the proof of the equivalence between the four color theorem and the fact that every cubic map is three edge colorable.